You're watching Ruroni K95's anime review on Inuyasha Affections Touching Across Time. Hi Ruronis, this is your pal Ruroni K95 here. So today's anime, we're going to be reviewing another anime based on a manga from Romiko Takahashi because I got other anime titles like Rama One Half and Meza and Urusei Yatsura planned for the later anime review videos in the near future. But before I start with the review Inuyasha series, let's start with the Inuyasha movies. For today's anime review, Inuyasha Affections Touching Across Time. Inuyasha's father defeated a powerful Mongol moth named Yokai, a named Hyoga, 200 years ago. Now a Shikan jewel fragment has freed Menomaru Hyoga's son. He seeks revenge for his father's destruction and feel free to the free the power of his father was sealed away with him. Menomaru resurrects his minions, Ruri and Hari, to ag plot against Inuyasha. Inuyasha, Sango, and Moroku soon find themselves battling a scorpion demon. When Kilala enters the fray, she is scratched by the demon's claw and venom. Sango and Inuyasha combine forces to weaken the demon's exoskeleton. Moroku finishes off the demon with his wind tunnel, leaving only his severed head. Kagome neutralizes the jockey surrounding the Shikan no Tama before picking up the piece. Menomaru smiles and orders Hari and Ruri to execute their plans. The crew relax at a picnic prepared by Kagome when Kilala runs off and Sango and Moroku investigate where she has gone. The duo soon have their hands full dealing with the Hari and Ruri who reveal they only have led them into a trap. When Moroku attempts to use his Kazana wind tunnel, Ruri moves in and copies his power, and Hari and having it stolen Sango's faithful companion Kilala retreats in with Ruri. Menomaru then abducts Kagome and puts her under mind control, so she turns against Inuyasha. When Enomaru is finally able to access the power of his predecessor, sealed away by Inuyasha's father, he becomes the new Hyoga, and exponentially more powerful as each generation gains the power of all preceding generations. Hyoga soon begins to change the essence of time and space, as he's absorbing the souls of countless people in order to for Oli merge himself with his family's power. This causes the mind control that he put on Kagome to be awaken, and he forces her to injure Kaede and search for Inuyasha. As he's crossing a bridge, Inuyasha thinks he sees Kikyo, but instead it's Kagome who is wearing clothes similar to Kikyo's. Inuyasha greets her on the bridge while Kagome is trying to tell him to run, but unfortunately she cannot be heard. Kagome then walks over to Inuyasha and puts her head on his shoulder. He embraces her after which Kagome says, Inuyasha, get away, warning him of her attack. He looks on in amazement, but is then stabbed by magical claws then at come from Kagome's hands. Afterwards, he realizes that Menomaru has put Kagome uh, under a spell. He is then chased throughout the forest by the controlled Kagome to the tree that he was once sealed, regaining control by of herself for a moment. Kagome insists for Inuyasha to run. After hearing that from everyone, Inuyasha gets angry and says he's sick of everyone telling him to run it when in danger and refuses to leave without her, surprising Kagome by the intensity of his voice. When he refuses to leave without her, however, it is that and that Kagome complete loses complete control of her body altogether and shoots Inuyasha, pinning him to the tree. Similar to what happened between him and Kikyo 50 years later, which we'll review the anime series after the movies. Sending Kagome into a much heartbreak and despair that she breaks free and of her mind control and screams out in pain for Inuyasha and runs over to him, holding him in her arms, sobbing. Kikyo then appears and says, how ironic is that... Uh, 
it was for that to happen again. She, then she begins to tell Kagome that this happened because Kagome did not belong in the past in the feudal era, and that she needs to take the jewel shards and return to her own time. Kikyo then forces Kagome down the Bones Eater's well to remove her f once and for all from the past since through Menomaru's manipulation of time, she thinks that Kagome will be trapped in the future, forever trapped in the future. After returning to her own time, Ki Kagome walks out to a snowy Tokyo when she is ta walking towards the tree that Inuyasha was sealed to. And where he sits now, she sees him there unconscious due to her shooting him with an arrow when... While she was controlled by Menomaru, as she walks towards him, a snowflake floats by and erases the image. Is that when she realizes that a way, without a way back to the feudal Japan, then she, that she can never see Inuyasha again, and then she collapses and begins to cry. Once she gets back up, speaking of which, she heads over to the tree and places her hand on it. Kagome and Inuyasha then connected to each other through the tree and began to w talk through their thoughts. He asks her where she is, and Kagome tells him that she is in her own time. He replies by saying, Oh, did you get scared? Angry at first. Kagome says that was not the reason, but then she recalls her encounter with Kikyo and admits to being afraid. Is that It is then that Kagome sees Inuyasha as if he were awake, and with her that at that moment she tells him that she feels helpless, and since she hurt him, that was maybe that maybe it's better if she wasn't around at all. With that, Inuyasha stands up and tells her to stop saying such things. Kagome begins to tell him not to move because he will be open his wounds. But Inuyasha walks over to Kagome and embraces her tightly to him, thus name affections touching across time, saying to her, I need you with me, Kagome. Have you realized that yet? Kagome then begins to cry again and lets her head fall into the, his shoulder, saying, Thank you, Inuyasha. So the scene cuts back to Kagome standing by herself, and she tries to go back to the well, but she sees that it has roots coming out of it. She then runs back to the tree and touches it again and tells Inuyasha she cannot come back. Confess using her grandpa and brother who think she has lost it. Inuyasha then replies that she used a sacred arrow. Be Kagome begins to stay that she doesn't have any sacred arrows in the present day era, but then she realizes where she can get one, but then gets she get, then gets a stick and bow from her grandfather and jabs the stick into the hole of the tree where she had injured herself in, earlier in the film when where Inuyasha was pinned to pulling out a tip of an arrow before running back to the bone eater's well her mother gives inuyasha her uh, gives kogome her school uniform sorry about that telling her to do what she had to do after changing clothes kogome shoots the arrow into the well where just as she's reawakened inuyasha is determined to slash away the roots despite the protests of kaede and shippo due to his wounded condition however before he can do so, the blast from the arrow that Kagome shoots causes Inuyasha to get burnt and fall back into the rubble. Kagome emerges from the well and is happily welcomed back by Shippo and Kaede, I suppose. Before getting into a fight with Inuyasha for the explosion, who asks she had to make n such a noisy entrance, verifying things are officially back into normal between them, Miyoga, and then interrupts their fight and tells them that they have to defeat Menomaru before it's too late. So Shomaru appears, realizing that his father's ancient enemy is fighting with his half-brother, but chooses not to interfere. For the first time in the series, he has a conversation with Kikyo. Kikyo somehow knew he was Inuyasha's older brother, and Sashomaru knew about her relationship with Inuyasha, as he hold, told to Jacken and Rin that she was nothing but a dead Miko. He leaves warning her that he will only... He, only he will kill Inuyasha. Miroku and Sango manage to defeat Hari and Ruri and join Inuyasha, Kagome, and Shippo in a stand against Menomaru. However, he emerges from his cocoon as the new lord, Hiyoga, a moth god, 
With far power, more powerful than his father he ever had, only the power of Kagome's sacred arrow and Inuyasha's black lash wave attack do they manage to find a way to destroy Hyoga for good. So after the credits end, Inuyasha and Kagome are sitting together in modern day Tokyo by the tree on either side. She side talking about their conversation through their thoughts and the tree. Kagome then says that she wants to make everyone some more lunch and Inuyasha ends up insulting Kagome's cooking by saying that he only he liked the pre-made stuff causing him in her to make him sit. So that's how you finish this anime review. So the movie stands far enough in the series that Rin is already with Sashomaru and Inuyasha masters the Black Lash Wave, which is so after episode 54. But not far enough, Kikyo has to have lost bitterness over her death, which cut at her from the flowing time. Sashomaru doesn't have Tokijin. Despite Inuyasha having mastered the Black Lash Wave, likely an oversight... Kagome wears the apron with the P.O. P.O. symbol, which comes from Rumiko Takahashi's second major work, Meizan Koku, used by the protagonist, Kyoko Otanashi, but in pink color. Let me guess, Inuyasha and Meizan Koku are created by Rumiko Takahashi, because Rumiko Takahashi also did Rama One Half and Urusei Yatsura. That's why I forgot to mention. Satsuki made a cameo in the end credits. Forgot to mention... So, now, if this was the Inuyasha series, I'll... Oh, probably... I will plan on reviewing the Inuyasha series after I reviewed all all four of the Inuyasha movies. Speaking of which, the, the character some of the characters are designed by Hidayuki Motohashi, who also worked on Fushigi Yugi, Project Eiko, Grayside, Blue Slide, and Sarah's Celestial Legend. The film was released in 2001 in Japan, but in the United States of America, it was released in 2004. Be and the song No More Words is performed by Ayumi Hamasaki. This movie was made by... The production company on a Inuyasha was made by Sunrise, which is known for their work on the Gundam series franchise, as well as Daitarn 3. Inuyasha Affections Touching Across Time was released December 15, 2001, because it grossed about, which is probably in Japan, but it was released with an English dub in 2004 by Viz Media. And, oh, and all, Inuyasha was based on the manga by Rumiko Takahashi. Forgot to mention, if you are an anime fan, you might learn about this. Oh, Menomaru was voiced by Tomokazu Seki, who did anime such as... who is known for the voice as Domon Kashu in Mobile Fighter G Gundam, and he also did the voice for Toji Suzuhara in Neon Genesis Evangelion. This is the first Inuyasha anime movie with the voice actor Tomokazu Seki, who is known for the voice as Domon Kashu from one of my favorite Gundam series, Mobile Fighter G Gundam. So that's going to be it for my anime review on Inuyasha Affections Touching Across Time. Thank you for watching, but before we go, here's my quick thoughts. I have the first Inuyasha movie on DVD, which is in my anime collection. Forgot to mention. Hope subscribe for content. My anime plan and link in the description down below. You can share this video on your Twitter and Facebook. If you have a Twitter and Facebook account, be sure to give this video a thumbs up by clicking the like button. Please leave a comment on what are suggestions of which anime should I review by leaving in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, Ruroni K95. Feel free to join my channel as well. Click on my notifications bell button. Check out my other videos that I've uploaded as well. And that's all I have for today's uh, for to say for today's anime review. So keep it otaku for this anime review on Inuyasha Affections Touching Across Time, because this is my new anime review. Thank you for watching my anime review. I'm glad you liked it. I hope you enjoy it. Hope to see you soon for the next anime review, and have a great day. So this is Ruroni K95 saying, this is Ruroni K95 signing off, and thank you for watching my anime review on the Inuyasha movie for today's anime review, which is Inuyasha Affections Touching Across Time.